Hello, people of Earth and beyond. A warm welcome to all of my Sildrothi and Betraskin friends out there. If you haven't been to my channel before, my name is Shannon, and today I'm going to be doing my review of Aurora Rising. Before I go any further, or say anything else, I just have to say that I absolutely love this cover. The art is just so, so beautiful. Alright, I have to give a quick shout out because I actually found this book through Peru's Project, who is a booktuber. Uh, she made a video about her upcoming summer reads and I was looking for new material to read and I thought this one looked really interesting and sounded really interesting. So I picked it up and I really enjoyed it. The story follows Tyler Jones and his crew as they go on several adventures through space. Um, Tyler Jones is the top of his class and he has his pick of his crew basically at their graduation ceremony, but he actually miss misses the ceremony because he was rescuing Ari, who is the girl on the cover. Um, Ari was cryogenically frozen in a ship that it supposedly crashed and uh, disappeared 220 years ago, but somehow she is still alive. So Tyler misses the ceremony and therefore misses the chance to pick who's actually in his crew, and he ends up with basically the dregs of the academy, the, the people that no one else wanted on their ship. And that's all pretty much in the first chapter, so it's not really a spoiler. Um, I am going to be dividing this into a non-spoiler section and a spoiler section. In the non-spoiler section, I'm just going to give a really brief um, overviews of what I thought about all the different elements of the story, and then I'll go more in depth in the spoiler section. Before I get into that, though, I know you're just burning with the question of did I like this book, and I've kind of already answered it actually, but yes, I really, really enjoyed this book. Um, I read it in three days, which for me is really fast. I just, I couldn't put it down. I'm going to be breaking this down into three categories, which are the world building, the writing, and the characters. Not in that order. <laughs> But let's dive right in with the non-spoiler section. First up, the writing. This book is written in present tense, which normally I don't do very well with, but I think that it actually really works. There's a lot of action in this story, and the present tense keeps you in that action. There are a lot of perspectives in this book, um, which worried me going in. There are seven perspectives and it's ev basically everyone in the crew gets a perspective and I was very apprehensive of the about this when I started reading, but I actually don't think it's bad. Like, it helps characterize all the characters. They're all really fleshed out uh, through this and it's not confusing. I was afraid that the perspective changes would be unnecessary or that they would be repetitive, but they're really not. I think it was done very well. There is some mild adult content, there's a little bit of raunchy humor, and there's a, quite a bit of cursing, really. Um, I'm not a fan of that stuff, it just doesn't appeal to me. But, I mean, there wasn't too much of it that I had to, like, set the book down. That's really a pre personal preference thing, it, that certain times it didn't appeal to my sense of humor, but it was fine. I did feel like there was one dropped plot thread, um, which I'll get more into in the spoiler section, but there was one thing that they brought up that I was, like, I expected it to be a big thing and then it wasn't really and so I was like okay why like I get why it was mentioned but not why it wasn't used I'll talk more about that later on and finally for 
the writing, I'm not really sure how I feel about the plot twist. Um, it wasn't a bad twist. It was just, it was really surprising to me. It, it took a direction that I wouldn't have expected from, like, the story that I thought was being told, if that makes any sense. Basically, it just, I was expecting one thing and it didn't, happen that way and it's not necessarily bad I'm just not sure how I feel about it and I would have to continue reading the series to make an a definite statement about it and again I will talk more about that in the spoiler section I am being very vague right now for anyone who actually wants to read the story the next category is world building and I have to say oh my gosh the world building is amazing in this book i just mm. here's the thing i was really scared that they weren't going to be able to flush out every alien culture that they come in contact with because this is a sci-fi it takes place in space and they meet other species and so it's like I really thought they weren't going to have time to discuss all of them. And I mean, they don't really spend a lot of time on species like Chilarians, but those, like, there's one Chilarian uh, ca character in the story and he's not, like, part of the group or anything. But they have two alien uh, crew members, one is Sildrothi and one is Batraskin, and we get maybe not the full view of both of their cultures because that would be really hard but we get a lot of information about the cultures of their people and i just think it was done so well so tastefully and i really understand this universe um which is great the one thing i have about the world building and this isn't a critique per se because i see why it doesn't really uh, happen they don't spend a lot of time on Earth culture. Like, they're not even on Earth, but a lot of the characters are human, and they don't talk about how Earth has changed in 380 years, um, roughly from, you know, like, our time now. They don't talk about the culture of Earth, um, or cultures, but I... I don't think that's really a detriment because they don't spend any time there. I would like to see a little bit more of Terran culture in, further along in the series because, you know, it's just nice to know in a sci-fi series that takes place in the future how has Earth changed. But it's really not a problem, it's just an observation I have. And finally we come to the characters and I'm just gonna give some brief, vague statements about my feelings of the characters, they are mostly likable. Um, one of the reasons I was drawn to this book was the idea of a bunch of misfits like coming together and forming. I was hoping for a family, but I will settle for team because they really do become um, a well-working team by the end. I think that all of the characters, all of the main characters at least, are fleshed out, really developed, they all have really distinct personalities, which is especially good when you're reading from their perspectives and it helps you, you know, keep track of whose head you're in and makes it easy to read. So, characters, good, story, good, and world building, excellent. Now we're going to get into the non-spoiler section and I'm going to be nitpicking this a little bit. But if you want to read this book without any spoilers, now is your time to sign off. Thanks for tuning in. Back to writing and the dropped plot thread. I really expected the Star Slayer to be a bigger deal. Like, I thought it was going to be the main conflict of the story. And I'm not saying that it was a bad thing that it's not, because um, it totally diverged from my expectations, but... It, it does feel very dropped. Like, I get why they have the Star Slayer 
the war breed attack uh, at the beginning when they're delivering the medical supplies. It's so that they can introduce the GIA. But after that, like, no one really mentions it again. Cal says at one point that he can't ignore the war between his people any longer. But that's, that's about it uh, for talking about the Star Slayer. I'm hoping that it comes into play more in the later books. I kind of have a theory for how it might, but I'm not sure and I'm not going to say anything. I'm just, I'm hoping it comes back up again because, I mean, someone who slays stars, that's a really big deal. And you can't just forget about that. And the plot twist. They're plants. Like I said, I don't know how I feel about this. It's just, it, it's not bad, it was just interesting. Uh, you know, with a science fiction book, you expect it to be all aliens and the star battles and I don't even know, but it plants, the villain being plants just seemed a little out of place or it just not something I would have expected. And I think it was done really well. And I I like the hive mind that they have and the consuming mentality and I think that it is an actually dangerous adversary um, but it was it just seemed a little weird and I'm still on the fence a bit and I really do think I would have to read more um, to say whether I really like it or not I do like the um, reveal of the GIA agent being Ari's father, and I think I figured it out like right before it happened. I was like, oh, it's gonna be her dad. I don't really have anything else that I want to say about the world building. Um, like I said, the Betraskin and Sildrathi cultures are really talked about enough to get a good idea of them. And I think it is good to definitely uh, touch on them because they have a Sildrathi and Vitraskin, uh member members in their crew. And I just, I think it was done really tastefully. So I have nothing else to say about that one, but I have plenty to say about the characters. Starting off with Zila, um, they didn't go in depth with her backstory or anything. She's the person that we know least about, and I actually really like that. The thing is, they spend time fleshing out all of the characters. Like, Finian, we know his backstory. Scarlet and Tyler, we know theirs. Kat, we know hers. Ari, we know hers. And Cal, we know a bit about his. I mean, we don't know anything about Zila, and I think that's just really good because, like, any more would be an overload of information, and it still gives us mystery about her. I am intrigued by her, and I want to learn more about her in reading later books. We get the sense that her past has not been happy, but we don't know exactly what happened, and so I'm just looking forward at to learning about that later on. Also, she's really smart and sassy, and I love that. Finian is uh, pretty fleshed out as well. Um, we get a really good sense of his personality in this book, and he's not my favorite person, but I really like him as a character. Like, I don't think he and I would click in real life, but I think he was well done and well written, and I don't really have anything else to say about him. I don't really have a lot to say about Cal either. Um, I, I just think he's a good character. He's really interesting. I like the whole fighting against what society says. Um, I was very surprised about his feelings for uh, Aurora, and I didn't know how I would feel about it, but I actually, I, I think it's a good, pa good match. Um, 
as I read further. Just, yeah, I don't, I don't have a lot to say about him. I think he's just good. I think he's well developed. And I do want to know more about his backstory too, but we got a little bit of it. So if we don't get more, then that's fine. Um, I just think, like, you know, he could have been really flat and stoic, and he's not. He's actually really interesting. Scarlet is a really interesting balance of mom, mom friend and it girl. And I... I didn't think I would like her, just because I don't tend to like girls who are, you know, the, the popular girls um, with the short skirts and whatever, um, but I actually do like her. These authors do such a good job of making me like characters that I don't think I'm gonna like, except in two cases, which I'm about to get to, but like... Scarlet, there's so much more to her than just being sexy, and I just, I think it was really well done. I think her personality is uh, great, it's fun, and yeah, she's great. Alright, now we, we get down to it. This is where I've got some complaints. Alright, Tyler Jones. Tyler is too perfect. Everybody loves him. He's the golden boy. All the girls fall for him. Blah. I have a really hard time sympathizing with Tyler or uh, liking him at all because he's not endearing. His perfection is not endearing. It's just a little bit annoying. And basically, he's just so perfect that he's flat. His only personality trait is that he's good at everything and he has dimples. I don't even know. Like, I don't know what skills he has. I mean, I guess he's he's good at thinking fast, which I appreciate. I don't think we saw enough of it, but it's like, I just, I, I really don't like him. Making your characters moral and self-righteous and everything, that's great, but you, they have to have some kind of flaw to be endearing, and he has no flaws. He is not endearing in the least. He's boring. Cat. I don't like Cat. It's for two reasons, really. Number one, I think too much of her personality is wrapped up in being in love with Tyler. I think Kat has a really intriguing personality. I think she's fiery and brave and quick-witted and all that, but it's like her main attribute is being in love with Tyler. And I just, I really want that to be pushed to the side so that I can get to know her more. The second reason I don't like Kat is purely personal preference and it's because I know that if she were a real person, she and I would not click. We just wouldn't move in the same circles, um, probably would have a lot of differing opinions on things, and, you know, it's, it's hard sometimes to get attached to a character that you know you wouldn't get along with in real life. But, like I said, that's personal preference, so if you find yourself connecting with Kat, good for you. And all of this made it really hard for me to be sad when Kat died, especially when her last thought is, I know he loves me. It's like, you're losing your individuality, you're, and your last thought is on someone else. I just, I also added to the fact that I just didn't see enough of her personality. Like, it, it was there under the surface, but it was, like, not enough for me to really be attached to her. I just... I, I, I had a hard time being sad for her. I was like, oh, she died. I guess she feels some remorse about the way she treated Ari before she dies, which I appreciate. But now she's just kind of gone. I also don't really buy into the romance between her and Tyler, maybe because I don't like either of them, and Tyler's really boring, and it's hard to 
have chemistry with a boring character. So I just, I don't buy into their romance at all. And finally, Ari. I really like Ari. I think she's a good protagonist, a good character in general. Um, and she's just, I connected a lot more with her than any other character. And I just, I like her personality. I think it's cool that they made her an explorer and a cartography nerd. Um, it's something a little bit different and it's something right away for the reader to latch onto and something that like gives her um, a little, little bit of a personality right away and then we see more as she goes on. For someone who's been, um, you know, asleep for 220 years and is realizing that they're never going to see their family again or anything like that, I think that uh, she copes pretty well. The one time that she like freaks out and um, after she has that another like episode where she's unconscious and uh, it's like someone else is controlling her body and she's just like, I don't know why this is happening to me, I want to go home. I think that was actually really understandable, um, even if it is a bit like a tantrum. <laughs> the thing is, I wasn't expecting the team to receive her so well. Like, and on one hand it's really really nice because I'm so tired of seeing like the new person, the person who's completely lost to just being bullied by everyone, but at the same time I just, from the personalities presented in this uh, group, I wouldn't have expected all of them to be so nice to her. Granted, Kat is not really nice to her and almost like, lets her die at one point, um, but I mean, for the most part, they're at least tolerant. And complete side note, um, does Ari remind anyone else of Eleven from Stranger Things? Like, she even has the nosebleed thing going on. Also, she's kind of basically a female Love and Thumps, if anyone's read that series. I know it's not extremely popular, um, but it's about a boy who can see the future and he has dark hair with a white streak in it. <laughs> and I was just kind of like, what? Anyway, so she reminds me of certain other characters, but I think as a character on her own, she is also very strong. I don't know. Ari's just a precious little cinnamon roll. I am definitely going to be using the phrase holy cake from now on. I really liked that. Like I said, at first I was not completely sold on the relationship between her and Cal, but I actually like it. And um, the thing is, when Cal confessed his feelings for her, um, and told her about the poll and everything. I think Ari's reaction was just so mature and it made me love her even more and like be okay with this ship. Um, she doesn't respond right away but later asks him, will you give me a chance to fall in love with you? Like to make the decision for myself. I just, I thought she was incredibly mature about it and you know, it's not sappy in any way. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of romance in any form, but this I thought was just really handled very well. I think that's really all I have to say about Aurora Rising. Um, let me add in one more thing about the writing, and this is about formatting. They use, like, different fonts and stuff. Um, for uh, different things and they do stuff like this where uh, I don't think you can see that there you go um, they do stuff like this where like they separate it by line um, to make it more impactful I mm, in a way I like it 
because um, when she says things like, I know he loves me, and separated like that, um, it really draws a lot of attention to it. Um, when I'm actually reading, I don't like it as much because my eyes tend to skip to parts where I see that the uh, formatting is a little bit different and then I accidentally read ahead. Um, but I, I'm on the fence about this too, really. I'm not sure if I like it. I wouldn't do it personally as a writer, but I think I think it works and I understand what the authors um, were intending every time they did that and so yeah it's good. In summary I really liked this book. I enjoyed the characters. I enjoyed the story. Didn't appreciate some of the humor um, and didn't like two of the characters but really uh, overall I just enjoyed reading it and I definitely want to continue with the series and see where it goes. So thank you so much for watching. I try to post videos every week, doesn't always happen, but um, I'm reading a book right now that I might do a review on, we'll see. I'm planning on doing a review on Ptolemy's Gate, the third book in the Bartimaeus trilogy, at some point in the future, and I might do more videos like the one I did about the, the books I recommend for kids. I might do more nostalgic videos like that, who knows? Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day.